At Linksit, we know that choosing the right transceiver for a network can be a bit of a roller coaster. That's why we wanted to make this video so we can help you sort through the alphabet soup and make the right decision. The most important part of all this is to find the specifications that best fit your network needs. Form factor refers to the standardized size and shape of the optic. The most popular ones include SFP, QSFP, and XFP. The one you need is determined by what form factors are compatible with your switch or router. LC connectors are the most commonly used connectors on transceivers, though MPO and RJ45 are also available. Connectors don't necessarily have to match between the devices, but the cable connecting the two must be terminated in those connectors to bridge the two. An optic that isn't coded for your OEM system will basically render your switch or router useless. So you have to make sure to use fully OEM compatible transceivers to maximize overall network performance. Thankfully, all Linksit transceivers are expertly coded by our engineering teams for any major OEM router or switch. By going with Linksit, you can reduce your costs while experiencing the full feature set of your OEM systems. When upgrading fiber optic hardware to achieve fast your data rates is critical to carefully plan ahead. Components that don't operate on similar data rates can create a bottleneck in your data pipeline. When choosing transceivers, often the higher data rates are seen as better, but it's more about balancing network performance needs with cost and budget. Media refers to the physical composition of the cable that carries your data signals. Copper transceivers transmit electrical signals via copper cable, while fiber optic transceivers transmit light signals via optical fibers. Both media perform pretty similar at short range, however, fiber transceivers offer greater cost efficiency for ethernet at distance. The second factor to consider is the mode of cable you're intending to use, categorized into single mode fiber or multi-mode fiber. Single mode fiber has a much larger reach at higher costs, while multi-mode fiber is better in price with higher data rate capabilities. In terms of types, there are several types to be aware of when choosing a transceiver for your network. One example type would be a wavelength division multiplexing or a WDM transceiver. A WDM transceiver is a single mode fiber transceiver that transmits and receives signals at a specific wavelength band. By using WDM transceivers of different wavelengths with a multiplexer and demultiplexer pair, a single full spectrum signal of light can be packed with multiple discrete signals for maximum density and performance. Wavelengths are another important consideration point when choosing a transceiver. Since energy is lost over transmission distance, higher wavelength bands are used for long range applications, while lower wavelength bands are used for shorter range. When it comes to transceivers, specifying which wavelength will be carrying your signal is crucial as both receiving and transmitting optics need to be on the same page. The reach of an optic is so important that it's a key determining factor in which applications it's used for. Short reach optics are usually found in data centers, server farms, or single site facilities as they have far lower price points. This makes them more efficient for reducing capital and operational expenses. On the other hand, long reach optics are reserved for transmission of highly condensed WDM signals from campus to campus or cord to edge connections. Another crucial factor in choosing a transceiver is the environmental conditions. Harsh environments can exacerbate dispersion and attenuation. Using hardware specifically designed to be rugged, insulated and otherwise rated for industrial temperatures is key to avoiding such a situation when networking outside of climate controlled areas. Linksys industrial tempered transceivers are often rated for negative 15 to 85 degrees Celsius to help avoid these service degradations. So that's basically all the major elements you need to know to choose the right transceivers for your network. If you'd like any more help, please visit our store and contact us today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.